All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. It's from a guy, he shares his story, which is quite entertaining, my dad, about how when he was much younger, he made the mistake that so many guys do in a lot of the stories I go over, where he got married way too young, way too quickly without really getting to know who she was, and I do mean way too quickly. And to no surprise, things start to go to hell in a handbasket real quick, where you're going to see how she starts to really try to control him, who he hangs out with, what he does, etc., etc. And again, as you can imagine, things don't go too well, and more and more BS. And eventually, just like a lot of these stories, well, she starts acting in a way like a lot of these gals do when they lose complete and all respect for the guy who they can control and all that. And obviously, things don't work out with his marriage. However, you're going to see in this story, guys, and this guy, I might add, has a pretty good sense of humor in his storytelling here, how as he moves ahead in the world and does well, things don't go very well for her because she is a train wreck and is one thing after another. So it's quite a good story about a guy that makes mistakes, like a lot of guys do, but he learns from them, and very, in a very funny way, things that happen to her. And again, you're going to see in this story with regards to her, how the saying, a leopard doesn't change his spots is quite accurate. So definitely a good comeback story for a guy, quite humble guy, knows he messed up and all that, and you think you'll find this very entertaining. So it starts off, he says, uh, hello SSM, I sure wish your channel was around 20 years ago when I decided to get married. I ignored every relationship red flag, possibly because I was blinded by love, lust, or whatever. If I had a dollar for every time somebody said about, I wish you were around 20 years ago, man, I would be loaded. I could retire right now. Uh, the girl in the story, I had known her since I was eight years old. She was friends with my younger sister. Her initials are T.O. For this reason, I'll refer to her occasionally as number two. And number two is quite appropriate given uh, what I know about her by reading this already. When I turned 15 years old, her family had moved into an, uh, to another state in the South for employment opportunities. I had not kept in touch with any of them. When I turned 20 years old, she moved back to get away from her an abusive relationship. She was 19 years old at the time. Well, there's a red flag already, if we're being honest here. She and I had started hanging out from time to time, and we eventually began dating. At first, things were great, as they always are. Of course, things are always great in the beginning. We both worked full-time jobs and had all the bills and all the bills were paid. She enjoyed cooking for me. Hell, for the first time ever, I enjoyed cleaning. Everything was in harmony. After about six months of dating, we decided, and he put we in quotes, decided that it was time to take the, the next big step in our relationship and get married. Smack. Six months. You're dating this girl six months in relationship and you think it's a great idea to get married? Dude, you don't know anything about her. Yeah, you, you were acquainted with her growing up and all that, but you don't really know her. And and how old is he at this time? Like 20 years old, 21, give or take? Guys, the common theme in these stories are got rushed into a relationship too quick, didn't know the girl, started putting up with her crap, letting her boss him around. These are all common things. So for you relationship guys, much to learn from these stories that you hear over and over again. Guys make the same mistakes over and over again. It's amazing. But, you know, I made mistakes too. This is how you learn. Six months. You're out of your damn mind, bro. And I know you know this now, but holy shit. And he said, that was the first big red flag. You think? Uh, we got hooked up at a justice of the peace. Still at this moment, everything was good. We had our own place and the bills were always caught up. Food was always on the table. The next red flag that I ignored, which is odd because it makes absolutely no effing sense whatsoever, is that I was not allowed to hang out with my friends whenever I wanted. Here we go. Here we go, the stereotype of the gal now taking control of him. Now wanting to have you all to herself. And it's one thing if a girl obviously is attracted to you and likes you so much that wants to spend a lot of time with you. But it's different when she wants to deliberately distance you from all the things you enjoy, like your buddies and your hobbies and interests, and tries to just wear it down that you're her whole center of her universe. And they usually do this for two reasons. One is because they actually are psycho and just want to make you miserable and, and have you with them all the time on purpose. Or two, they're doing it because whether they realize or not, it's a test. In a sense that if I try to get this guy to give up his friends and his hobbies and he doesn't do it, I'm therefore attracted at, at his strength. He's saying no to me, therefore I'm attracted to him. He's a masculine man, not going to let me push him around. 
Or, if he does this, he does give up his friends and his hobbies, well, that's a test that he fails, and now I'm no longer attracted to him, and I'm going to do more tests and bullshit. Guys, for your relationship guys, your girl is always going to test you. And he, this is a perfect example that happens. And a lot of guys fail this time after time. And does it make the girl love him anymore? Because he gives up his friends and his hobbies and interests slowly but surely over time? No. She loses respect for him. You never change for anybody, particularly your woman, ever. Your bros, you, you hold on to them like gold, as well as your hobbies and interests. And she's trying to distance you from that stuff. And I, I know I'm going on about this. Either she's doing it on purpose to make you miserable and control you, or it's a big freaking test. You never do that. Because if you don't, if you do, watch what happens. Uh, he says here, I don't, and he says, I don't mean during all hours of the night, but instead during the day on my days off. Apparently, since the only friend she had in town was my sister, she felt that I was not allowed to be able to hang out with my friends. Well, obviously, you're a good guy and sociable guy, and you have friends, and that's a good thing. So she's obviously a little jealous of that. Well, maybe that says something about her and her personality, and she can't make friends very easily. Apparently, since the only friend she had in town was my... Oh, I read that part. He says, mind you, I'm a guitarist, and the friends I was hanging out with were also other musicians that would jam with me. There was no uh, debauch debauchery, drugs, or alcohol involved. We would just hang out and jam on the six strings. Yeah, you need to be around your your bros to, do, to partic participate in this activity here. Uh, but apparently, having a good time with friends was not acceptable. It made her upset, and she felt the need to degrade me for, for it as I was doing something wrong. I was in love, so I tried my best to appease her, smack, appease her as I thought that was the best way to go. Smack again, I know. You're darn right, bro. When does appeasement ever work with a bully or an aggressor? Never. But this is the problem that guys do. I'm going to uh, drop all my friends, stop doing all these things, and that'll make her happy. If I can do all these things and make sacrifices, that'll make her happy. Meanwhile, you're demeaning yourself. You stop being the guy that she was once attracted to, okay? So, guys, never do this. Ever. It's not going to go well. And he knows this. And I'm just pointing this out to, as a teaching tool to help other dudes. It's amazing to me how many guys do this. It's unbelievable. And they wonder, and not, not that, that, not that, they wonder why she loses respect for them. Even though she's the one that wanted her to, them to do that. And you hope some that actually don't get it. I kid you not. They'll be like, oh, you changed, you changed. And the guy's like, what do you mean? Yeah, you want me to spend more time with you. You want me to give up this to be with you. And now you're saying I changed? Well, I don't know. And she'll end up going for a guy, cheating on him with a guy who doesn't do any of that stuff. It's amazing. He says, a few months go by and she comes to me with this wonderful idea, wonderful offer from her father. He said that we can move into the basement apartment in his house rent free as long as we helped out with some household duties, such as mowing the lawn. And it, was, it would allow us the opportunity to continue our education in college as it was much cheaper in his state than it was in mine. This enticed me, so I transferred my job, packed up my stuff, and headed south. Well, you may, may have seen some opportunities there. And I'm all for uh, going for opportunities, but you're then moving to her turf. That's never a good idea. He says it was awesome. The weather was great. The air was always warm. We had a swimming pool. I made new friends at work that I could hang out with. I truly enjoyed the life I was building in this new place. I was working full-time uh, full hours. My bosses were very nice. Of course, I was always a very hard worker, so my rapport with supervisors was usually good. I was going to college, making even new friends, and I was sporting a 4.0 GPA with very little effort. I was working out five days a week, whether it be running or lifting weights. At this moment, the stars were aligned. Or so I thought. Yeah, so you thought. But let's review here. Notice he said he moved to a new place. Look how he made the best of it. He adapted. He made new friends. Work was going well. Busting his butt. Going to the gym five days a week. 4.0 grade point average. I mean, it's almost a little too good to be true. But this guy can adapt and he can uh, make things happen wherever he goes. And that's awesome. This was a guy on his grind. The problem was he was married at this age. Can you imagine if he wasn't married to her, but he was on his grind like this, the type of things he could have made happen for himself in his early 20s there? And I know he's doing well now, but you get my point. This is why I tell you guys, the choices you make in your uh, your late teens and 20s, it's pretty much going to set the course of your life. So choose wisely who you hang out with, where you go, what you do. It's very important, guys. Apparently, number two, his wife, had been having reservations about our relationship. 
Oh, imagine that because you're such an awful husband. You know, spent you moved to where she wanted to go. You're doing well, supporting her. You're obviously not hanging out with those friends anymore. Reservations, huh? To me, this was odd because I was a great husband. I worked hard at everything I did, whether it be my employment, schoolwork, housework, or dedication to her needs. She had been hanging out with a couple of new friends that she met at work, both guys. A red flag. Uh-uh. So you can't hang out with your bros, but she's allowed to hang out with other dudes? That's a problem. Now, your first thought might be that she was seeing them, but, but believe me, if there's anything in this world that I'm sure of is that number two was not slipping with those two guys. She wasn't on their menu if you catch my drift. Yeah, well, I've heard stories where women would sleep, sleep with complete sleazeballs. 400-pound dudes looking like they haven't taken a bath in a, in a month just because they want some attention. So you never know here. But anyhow, he says, uh, I had occasionally gone out with her and these two guys from time to time. They were actually good people, and I had no problem with them being friends with her. In fact, one of them had helped me towards the end of the relationship with number two. So I worked third shift in a retail store that was open 24 hours. This allowed me to go to school full-time during the day. One night at around 11.30 p.m., her friend had shown up at my workplace and said that I should probably call my wife to see where she was at. It turns out that she had set up a date with some other guy to hang out at a sports bar across town that night while I was working. So there you go. Nothing may have been going on with those two dudes you mentioned a moment ago, but that set the precedent for her to, well, if I can hang out with those guys, it's perfectly okay for me to hang out with other guys. See what I'm talking about here? So if you're married or in a serious relationship, your girl shouldn't be hanging out with other dudes like uh, their buddies. Not a good idea. Right here. That set the stage. But you'll see this is a blessing in disguise in the long term, in the big picture here. Uh, let's see here. Her friend was disgusted that a married woman would do that to her husband, so I made sure that I knew what was going on. I thanked him and quickly gave her a call. When she finally picked up the second call, I asked her where she was and what she was doing. She said she was just hanging out with some friends and there was nothing going on. I was suspicious, but I moved on. Smack. You should not have moved on. You should not let that go. It was bullshit. She was cheating or setting the stage to cheat. And you're going to see that I'm right. Uh, the next time something happened was when we were both in our apartment. The phone rang, which was in our bedroom, and I went to go answer it since I was the closest. I don't mean by a couple feet either. It was like 10 feet from the door, and she was in an entirely different part of the apartment. As I turned to go over to the door, she literally came running past me to get there first. I told her I would get it, and number two said it was fine. She was expecting a call. So the phone rings, I'm picturing this, and he walks over to get it, and she comes tearing in like her ass is on fire to answer the phone. I, gee, I wonder why. Who is she expecting a call from? Now, this type of behavior was never exhibited by her before, so I thought it was quite odd. Pay attention to people's actions, gentlemen. She went to the bedroom and clo quickly closed the door behind her. I waited a couple of I waited a couple seconds, stunned, and then snapped out of it. I opened the door, looked at her surprised face, and simply asked who was on the phone. She abruptly ended the phone call and said that she wanted a divorce. Wow. Just like that. I want a divorce. You know, this guy actually should have been doing cartwheels and jumping up and down celebrating and singing hallelujah. I later found that the guy on the phone would end up being the guy she started dating after we broke up or before. I didn't really know or care at this point. He says, you're holy F. Where did that come from? I was checking all the right boxes, but still I was doing something wrong. I went to work that night in a strange state of mind. I wasn't angry, but confused. I had no idea what just happened. Well, I know what happened. I mean, we all know what happened. You rushed into it, the marriage. You didn't know her well enough. It should have been years instead of months. And, and probably by then you realize what she was like. You never would have married at all. And then you start giving up all these things for her and being compliant. Women do not respect weakness. And when a man lets her tell him what to do, boss him around, he changes his things about him to make her happy, puts her on a pedestal, doesn't check her when she's being an a-hole, she loses respect for the guy because she sees weakness. And there's more tests and more tests. And she wants the guy to stand up to her. And when uh, he doesn't do that, loses respect for him, and sooner or later we'll start cheating or leave him. So this is what you have right here. I'm willing to bet you that dude she was cheating with wasn't, let, wasn't uh, letting her tell him what to do, and she found that attractive. But also, she is psycho, so let's be honest there too. 
However, I felt my stomach that the time was right for me to move on. The following day, I dropped out of my classes at school since it was out of state and I had nowhere to live, which, um, which was more of a priority for me. I requested a transfer at work back to my home state and was accepted. Within a week, I packed my car full of what I could carry. Number two and I had split all our assets and I drove 12 hours through the night back to where I was born. I can't blame you if you want to just pick up, your, pick up your stuff and run. One could argue, well, you're both in the apartment lease and blah, 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 but you just want to get the hell away from her. I don't blame you at all. Now, you didn't mention about divorce or anything like that, but obviously that's happening. He says, I won't lie. Things were a little rough from the start, but with the help of from people like my grandmother and my father, I made it back on my feet again. Of course you did. A man can always get back on track. Even if it's difficult, a man can do this. So you guys remember that. They're in bad relationships right now, but are afraid to leave because of the ramifications that will be hard. You can get back on your feet. Plenty of stories prove that. I began dating as soon as I felt good enough to do so, but there was no way I was delving into a relationship that, deep, that deeply again. Within six weeks at work, I got promoted to a supervisor role. Everything was going well. Awesome. You've proven to be resourceful and being able to adapt and start over, and yet you're doing it again. That's great, bro. Uh, until the day, until the day I got a call from my boss about something weird, weird, some weird accounting issue. Apparently, a check that was in my name had been bounced in the store I had just transferred from. This was odd because I never wrote checks to pay for merchandise. I only used checks to pay bills. We looked at the details of the check and noticed that the day it was redeemed was the day that I was already out of state and back home. This meant that number two must have done something with it. I quickly gave her a call. I told her what was going on and asked for an explanation. She said, and I quote, I keep my things in a filing cabinet drawer in a new place that I'm staying, and there are a lot of people living here. One of them must have gone through my stuff and taken the check and used it at the store. What a load of crap. Oh, people were at my house and people were living here, so they must have done it. Not me, somebody else. He says, I did not believe this one word. I did not believe one word she said, so I gave her a quick ultimatum. I told her she needs to call the police and file a report right away, or I was going to call in myself. She said, okay. So, a few weeks go by, and her brother calls me. I was still friends with him, as he didn't really like the way his sister had ended things with me. He tells me that his sister ended up being arrested and was currently in jail. After all the crap she put him through, that put a big smile on my face, guys. Apparently, she did call the police and told them that somebody had stolen the check and used it at the store. Of course, the police went to the store and asked to view the camera footage. Number two was so effing stupid that she didn't realize she was being recorded. <laughs> what a dumbass. She was clearly the one cashing the check. So they went right back to her and charged her for filing a false police report, perjury, and writing a bad check. Not going to lie, this made me a little giddy inside. I believe she spent a couple weeks in jail and then had probation for a period of time. I don't know the details, nor do I care. That's hilarious, man. What an idiot. Anyhow, there were a few things of mine left at her father's house, and I had been cordially corresponding with him. We agreed upon a date that I could come and pick them up. It is a 12-hour drive, so I brought my new girlfriend at the time as a second driver since we were driving straight through the night. Now, when I left, number two was about 120 pounds. She was working out with me, and I was motivating her to stay in shape. After I left, her motivation apparently started coming from Krispy Kreme. She ballooned up to over 200 pounds in less than six months, and she got pregnant by her new boyfriend, soon-to-be husband. <laughs> well, that's satisfying. If she went from 120 pounds to 200, that is a massive percentage jump. Holy crap. That's one big girl. My new girlfriend was about 105 pounds and quite good looking. And there you go, man. Nothing that will make an ex girlfriend or wife crazy is have a younger hotter girlfriend and he's on the way to her home with his new young hot girlfriend with that being said i was only speaking with number two's father and never and, and never sent and, ne and never her since the since it was his house and i was going to uh, number two at that point was living with her new boyfriend and husband however she had found that i was going to be there to pick up my things and she wanted to make sure i only grabbed what was mine I walked in the front door, and there she stood, all 200 plus pounds of her. What I'm about to tell you is exactly how the conversation went down. It was short and simple. Number two said, hello, you look good. 
I said, you gained a lot of weight. At that point, she was shocked. So she left the conversation. I wasn't trying to be an ass. I was just pointing out an obvious fact. Personally, when somebody needs to hear the truth, I'm more than happy to be honest with them. I find that lying is detrimental to finding solutions and problems. It also helps that I didn't give a crap about her feelings, and since she tried screwing me over, I had no problem with targeting her weaknesses. He's just making an observation, that's all. Well, this all happened about 20 years ago. Since then, I became a father, got another promotion for work, and was transferred to another state. I'm enjoying life. I'm not with my son's mother, but we're very amicable with one another. Dude, are you telling me you got married a second time and it didn't work out? Is that what you're telling me? I'm glad you have a son and you have a good thing with him, but good Lord, bro. But it sounds like now he's really learned and things are going good. Please tell me with your second marriage, you at least waited longer than six months to do that all over again. Smack. Anyhow, my son lives with me full time and I do not require an any type of child support from her. She has, married, she has married a pretty cool dude that I get along with and everything's in harmony. I've finally gone back to school to work on my degree in computer science, which by the way is going very well, and I have plans for my life. I'm doing everything right and staying positive the entire way. Good for you, man, with the exception of getting married again a second time after all that shit. Good for you. I'm glad you're doing well. Do not get married a third time, dude. You, I, I hereby command you not to get married a third time. You can't be trusted in that area. Just keep doing what you're doing. Be on your grind. You want to date and relationships, fine. Don't get married. It's bad luck for you. I had thought that uh, I had not thought of number two for the longest time because that short moment in my life meant nothing more to me than learning a learning experience, such as touching a hot stove. One needs only to do it once to know not to do it again. Yeah, but you did do it again. I don't know. I don't know how things work with your second marriage. I'm assuming you didn't rush into it, but that didn't work out well. That didn't work out as well. Like I said, do not get married a third time. I'll find you and slap you. Then one day I noticed a missed call on my phone. I've always had a lot of missed calls that were usually scammers or spammers, but this one was different. It had the same area code as the state my ex-wife lived in. So I called it back. It turned out that there was a check cashing place that was looking for number two because she had apparently owed them some money, a couple thousand dollars. The very nice lady in the line asked me if I knew where number two was. I informed her that she was my ex-wife of 20 years ago, and if I had any idea where she was or how to get a hold of her, I would let her know. My exact wording was, trust me, ma'am, if I knew where that B word was, I would serve her to you on a silver platter. We both laughed. She thanked me for returning her call, and we bid each other a good day. At that moment, I felt even better about my success in life as she was failing. Now, some might say that it was evil to feel this way about another human being, but I assure you, she is a devil in disguise. She wanted to destroy me for absolutely no reason. I am a good person with good intentions, and I love life. Apparently, she was offended by that, so she can F off. I wouldn't feel bad. Not at all. She was a piece of trash, tried to ruin you, and for whatever her reasons were, back to the whole beginning of either trying to distance you from friends and things you enjoy because she's testing you, test your strength, which sadly a lot do, or she was doing our purpose just to make you miserable, whatever that happens to be, she deserves it. She's a piece of garbage amongst many other things and things she did to you, so does she? I wouldn't feel bad at all. I'd be laughing every day about that. Now, I do not feel that all women are evil. In fact, I would say that the majority have good intentions. Yeah, well, as the saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I do not believe they're all evil too, but believe me, there are a lot that are in that category in this world, especially nowadays. My brother, my brother and close friends are all in solid relationships with great wives. It is the type of relationship I originally thought I was getting into, but but to live is the but to live is to learn. And what I learned is that my money, my happiness, my success, my family, and my friends, my hobbies, and my businesses are not to be intruded upon by a woman for any reason. If I begin talking to a woman and she even hints at me, change, me changing something about myself, no matter how minuscule, I send her away. These are all red flags to show you how a woman can start to manipulate a man. It happens often and men today are more than aware of them. We all make mistakes, and that is okay. It's just It just isn't okay to keep making the same mistakes. That is the sanity. Be safe and well. Well, bro, be, sa- be safe and well to you, too. And a uh, great story there. And you made mistakes when you were younger. You didn't know any better. This is a lot of things a lot of guys do, but you learn now. And I'm, again, back to the whole thing, because you mentioned you obviously got married a second time. Hope you've truly learned about that. No third marriage for you. 
Don't keep doing the same thing over and over again and thinking it'll be different because it's not. You want to do relationships, knock yourself out, but do not get freaking married. Can't be trusted. But aside from that, you're doing great. I'm glad you got a son. You got a good thing going with him. I hope he does well to help. You can be a good role model to him. He does well, I'm sure. Make sure he watches my channel so he doesn't make the same mistakes that a lot of guys do. And keep focusing on your grind, your purpose, staying in good health, staying in good shape, doing well for yourself. And you set a good example for him and you have a great life because you're obviously in your early 40s like me. So, well, technically I'm mid 40s now that I'm 44. You got your whole life ahead of you. And it's just going to get better and better for you if you make the right choices. And I'm pretty sure you will. So, bro, great story. Thank you for sharing it. It will help some guys out. So, guys, you can see the learning, the lessons here. Again, don't rush into relationships. Really get to know the gal before you get any kind, any kind of serious commitment, let alone if you marry her. And you know my opinion about that. What else? Don't change things about yourself. Because a lot of times they do as a test to see if you're strong enough to say no. But what's the most attractive woman word to a woman? No. What's the most powerful thing I can do to a woman when she pushes them too far? Walk away. The bad boys bad boys say no, bad boys walk away, and bad boys don't change shit about themselves to make their girl happy. You think your average bad boy, because his girlfriend wants him to stop hanging out with his friends as much, is going to do that? Fat chance. Or change something about himself? Fat chance. Or give up his hobbies? Fat chance. And yet, she keeps coming back for more. Nice guys do all that stuff. And they lose respect for them because it's seen as weakness. Don't do that. For your relationship, guys, you understand this. I'm making this abundantly clear. Don't. If you if she wants you, to, if you have an alcohol problem or a drug problem or something like that, and she's trying to help you there, that's a good change. That's fine. But it's just simply you enjoy playing guitar or drums and she tries to get you to stop doing that. Or maybe you have a beard and she wants you to shave that beard. Or she wants you to start dressing differently. Like not, not better, but just differently. Don't do it. Don't change who you are. It's not going to end well for you. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.